so you think you're an 80s fan. Okay, Tommy Two-Tone, can you handle this? If you can't get sex, then the perfect thing for you to do is to jack off. It's I Love the 80s, and this is 1982. And now you find yourself in 82. The flicks, the fashions, the trends, the TV, the tunes. A totally awesome year that gave us these burning questions. Who would you rather do, Martha or Nina? Martha Quinn. Nina, she was a little more nasty. Were Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man estranged? From what I remember, they lived in separate video games. And what happens when a bat biter turns family man? You got it's married. Quite, yeah, got married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, Sarah Jessica Poindexter. I have a feeling that we'll both remember this life for the rest of our nights. And the wisdom of Jeff Spicoli. Hey, bud. Good party. Because you love the 80s. Because you still yearn to grow a mullet. Admit it. This is 1982. Eighty-two was the year that the mullet began to rise. The mullet has always been, you know, all business up on front and nothing but a party in the back. Yeah. The mullet to me, it's it's the haircut for the redneck on the run. It's like he's halfway through his haircut and he's just like, I gotta go. I'll get the rest of this later. Yeah, I had uh, I had a mullet. Yeah, Christ, man, it was terrible. I think the Duran Duran mullet was a much more uh, sexy mullet. They used hairspray. American mullets didn't use hairspray. Bono's was the best mullet. <laughs> I had a Lionel Richie mullet. I, that's the only mullet that I could pull off. It's part of my past I can't get rid of. My favorite mullet look, probably Rosie O'Donnell. She sports that thing like no man could. The VJs were as cool as could be. Alan Hunter with you at MTV. This was a strange phenomenon. We became almost as well known as the rockers on the video. This is it. Welcome to MTV Music Television. You know, I liked all the VJs. I thought they were all great. The first time we visited New York, every after hours club we'd go to, we'd run into J.J. Jackson. J.J. seemed like he just got all the ladies. JJ had that nice deep voice mm -hmm. and was just so suave mm -hmm. and just seemed like he scored at will. I never said I was a bowler, but I'm a rock and roller. <laughs> I envied JJ. The cool thing about Nina Blackwood and Martha Quinn, they were like sexy, but they weren't unapproachable. They were like the real sexy seniors. I liked Martha's energy and I remember thinking, oh, that's what I want to do. Martha Quinn. Without a doubt, yeah, I had a big thing for Martha Quinn. The buzzword of the day is sushi. Martha Quinn was the kind of girl you want to marry. Nina Blackwood was the kind of one you want to have fun with. All day, all night. Nina Blackwood could have taught me a thing or 12. Yeah. She just seemed wild. She was a little more nasty. She had that funky ass haircut. Nothing against Martha, but I like blondes. What can I tell you? Who would I rather sleep with? For me, I'll take Alan Hunter. You know why? It's soft. It's very soft. Very kissable. Fresh shaven. You know, smooth. I like that. Very smooth. Woo! I like to tap that ass. I love AJ. If you ask the average person to recall the 80s, they're going to remember Tony Basil. My whole 
whole sorority was addicted to the song, Nikki. You get a bunch of crazy drunk girls singing that song. It becomes even more obnoxious than it was as just the recorded version. When I hear the song, Mickey, I can't get it out of my head. It totally gets stuck in my head. Mickey became number one in Britain and then became number one in Australia. And then I got an American deal. Rock choreographer Tony Basil's love of cheerleading was the inspiration behind the video clip of her hit single, Mickey. Basil feels that cheerleaders have come a long way. Well, I think we should probably put a lot of this energy and talent in some real good use. She needs it! Now do you do I produced those videos. I directed those videos. I choreographed those videos. I was in that video, and I edited that video. God bless her, she's a sweet lady. But man, when that song was like playing on regular and heavy rotation, I was almost at a clock tower with pantyhose on my head and a long rifle. I am in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And trust me, this dancer would never be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame if it wasn't for Mickey and the one-hit wonder. Hey, bud. <laughs> Let's party. Fast Times at Ridgemont High was the greatest teen movie ever made. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. If you looked up at the screen and you saw your high school. What are you people? On dope? Some big U stars that we see today got some of their starts there. It's Forrest Whitaker, Judge Reinhold. Eric Stoltz is in there. Nicolas Cage is in that movie as well. Jeff Spicoli is Sean Penn. Oh, no! There was probably 55 Spicolis in my high school. I just thought, when I grew up, I want to be like Jeff Spicoli. I just wanted to be cool. Spicoli was cool. That was my skull. I'm so wasted. When you're in school, you only dream of doing stuff like Spicoli did when you ordered a pizza. Order the double cheese and sausage. Right here, dude. You've got this guy that just doesn't play by any of the rules and just does whatever the hell he wants. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you are doing? Learning about Cuba, having some food. And my favorite scene, sadly enough, is when Phoebe Cates takes off her top. Because I'm a simple, simple man. Hi, Brad. You know how cute I always thought you were. There's the horniest scene of all time when Phoebe Cates gets out of that pool. The top came off and it was like. <laughs> I dare you not to do what Judge Reinhold was doing in the bathroom when you see that scene. That a person in America after Fast Times at Ridgemont High came out who didn't make sure, damn sure, the bathroom door was locked. Oh, wait just a minute. Isn't anybody f knock anymore? The fantasy ended with just complete disaster and you were stuck with egg all over your face and hands. Every man who saw that, every young boy and man who saw that, shriveled just a little bit that day. Awesome! Totally awesome! Deja video. I think the centerfold video might have started in a boxing ring. Schoolhouse idea came about and said, hmm, that could be interesting. There are plenty of memorable ladies in the video, all dancers from the Boston area. It was a line that a lot of musicians use at bars. Hey, you want to be in a video? <laughs> There was this girl in this like this like black kind of bob haircut, and she looked just like Martha Quinn from MTV. Really, Martha Quinn? It's an urban myth. I'm here to say right now that Martha Quinn's definitely not the chick in the Jay Gals video. I love you. The premise of Square Pegs was that it was like these two geeky girls, and I think they were freshmen in high school, and they had like they wanted to remake themselves. They're going to come to high school and be like different than they had been in middle school. If you look at them; they've got to be the absolute top couple in the entire freshman class, and we're going to make friends with them. I know what boys like. The premise of the show to me of Square Pegs isn't as important as the fact that such a super nerd can become 
the epitome of a, a sexy city girl. I had a huge crush on Sarah Jessica Parker in Square Peg. I thought it was something so nerdy and cool about her. They did use the 80s device on Square Pegs of putting her in glasses and pulling her hair back so she could look as nerdy as possible. Patty, you're not actually going to wear your glasses, are you? Well, Lauren, you're wearing your braces. I loved Sarah Jessica Parker at the time because I'm six feet tall and I've been this tall since like the sixth grade. So I was like, I feel her with the big old long limbs and the crazy glasses. It's sad that her friend didn't get to work. I mean, her friend could do a Sex and the City spot, but I don't see Sarah Jessica looking out for that girl anymore. I'm not saying anything at Sarah Jessica, I'm just saying... Don't trust her. Sucker. <laughs> I love Amy G. Coming up, the delirium of Pac-Man fever. You had to have the t-shirts, the dolls, even that tasting candy they had. The madness of Joni loves Chachi. Don't base a TV show around Chachi. <laughs> and the power of pre-Osborne Zazie. I'm a leader of mayhem. Next on I Love 1982. But first, the makeup songs of 1982. Ladies and gentlemen, I, Lionel Richie, give you the makeout songs of 1982. Up Where We Belong by Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren. And Truly by yours truly the make out songs of 1982 do you feel the love i sure hope you do i'm brett michaels and i bring you the babe of 1982 kim wilde brit pop babe ray don chong cave babe kirstie alley Balkan babe he has a dora Mini babe. babe. And Tootsie, the babe with a little something extra, if you know what I mean. Babe. And there you have it, the babes of 1982, and I, I don't know. Babes of 82. The plot of Rocky 3 is as follows Rocky goes on the Muppet Show. Mr. T trains to kick Rocky's ass, does, and then Rocky kicks Mr. T's ass. It was during the summer, of course, we went every night. Me and my friend would sit a seat apart, thinking some hot chicks would come down and sit next to us. But I saw it 35 to 40 times during that period. I remember going to the theater and seeing that movie and just being so motivated to go to the gym and train and make it to the Olympics one day. It was all because of Rocky. I love that song. Eye of the Tiger is like when you're in the zone and there's nothing that's going to stop you. Bust you up. Go for it. Now, when we fought, you had that Eye of the Tiger, man, the edge. And now you've got to get it back. My favorite scene is, is the training montage. They're running on the beach, and at first, Rocky can't win. All of a sudden, Sylvester Sloan is faster than Apollo Creed, and now we know he's ready to fight. Hit me. Mr. T was this straight talking badass mother. I'm gonna torture him. I'm gonna crucify him real bad. He had all these gold chains and the mohawk. I just remember Clever Lang working out. It was the scariest thing I've ever seen. He worked out like in a dungeon with rusty pipes. It was just this big, tough looking dude. Scary sounding with the voice, sound like he eat gravel. I pity the fool. I pity the fool. I pity the fool. And I eat sandpaper. There was a real intimidation factor. You know, I'm still scared of Mr. T. Those 1 800 collect ads don't fool me. What's your prediction for the fight then? Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. And in fact, there was pain on both sides. <laughs> I don't think we could ever say that Sly has lost the eye of the tiger. I will watch Rocky 10,000. If, if, if he makes it, I'll watch it. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by knockout, the heavyweight champion of the world, the Italian stallion, Rocky Balboa. Nope. 1982 was a huge year for Ozzy. 
I mean, he bit the head off a bat. That's a surefire way to get your name across the world. Uh, I've just bitten the head off a bat on stage. He was hungry. I can't imagine why people would stoop to publicity stunts. That's just disgusting. A chicken, okay, but not a bat. In 1982, he finally married Sharon Osbourne. Also, you got it's married. Quite, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I want to ask you about this. So are you gonna Are you gonna turn into a homebody? You know, mow the lawn and stuff now. Me, I'll dig the lawn. And what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna dig it up and concrete it and paint it green. It's just got to be two people who are in love with each other. It's got to be that. Plus, maybe there's something in the bat blood. To get married to a bat eater is like not the same thing. How many people could say the year they found their wives, they also peed on the Alamo? Maybe he wasn't aware of the pride they have about the Alamo, and sometimes when you gotta go, you gotta go. At the gig, some Mexican guy comes up to me and says, Hey man, what's the big deal, man? We piss on the Alamo every night, you know, but nobody sees us. Because I'm me, I mean, it's like the world sin. Who hasn't done something in their life when they were really, really drunk that, that they were not in the position to make the correct judgment? I'll admit it. I've actually uh, relieved myself on the grassy knoll in Dallas, called myself the second shooter. The leader of mayhem. Joan Jett did more for me in the early 80s to give me the hope and the drive that, you know what, women can rock. And they don't have to rock and be pretty about it. They can rock and go, I love rock and roll. I Love Rock and Roll was a headbanging song that uh, that when it came out, everybody just hooked onto it. In her asexual rockness, she was all sex. That was intensely appealing to like rocker boys who wanted rocker chicks. Joan Jett was like the er rocker chick. The make out with you, take a swig of beer, pass half of it into your mouth, smoke a cigarette get into a fist fight with you and then go home with you. Ugh, she was hot and sexy and cool and all I wanted to do was went out and buy it and listen to everything she ever did. I love you. There was a formula and it seemed to work pretty well. Crime is committed. We've been wrong! Then there's a car chase and then Daisy Duke is hot, Boss Hogg is angry Me. and then the show's over. Make it the way That's just a little bit more than the law will allow. I think they taught us one thing, which is if you're ever in trouble with the law, get in your car and flee. We're gone. Come back here! Go, Fred, fight! Finally, there was a television show that made white trash cool. Didn't we need that? There are those who say they think the car was the star of the show. Everyone wants a car that you can't, whose doors don't open. It was perfect. Indestructible. My feelings about the General Lee is that it probably violated any decent emission standards. Perhaps Georgia has lax environmental laws, but keep your smog in Georgia. I remember when um, Bo and Luke were replaced by Coy and Vance. They decided that they didn't need us, so they hired a couple other guys that kind of looked like us. So the idea was, well, Bo and Luke are gone, so let's bring in their cousins, Coy and Vance. It's good to be here. With names like Coy and Vance, how could they go wrong? That's a license to print money as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why it didn't work out. Oh, they're awful. <laughs> the idea of those guys coming in and trying to basically act like us, that's pretty hard to do. Many fools have tried before, but no one has managed to replicate the magic of Tom Wilpat and John Schneider. McCoy and Vance are a chilling example of that mistake. Hi, I'm Tracy Elizabeth Lords, and I bring you the hunks of 1982. Well, this one did. John Stamos. Hospital hoodlum hunk. David Lee Roth, assless pants hunk. Sting, pre yoga hunk. Bruce Springsteen, Jersey hunk. And the Soloflex guy, you can look like him in two weeks hunk. Yeah, right. There they are, the men of 1982. 100% USDA crime hunk.
Here it is, 1982, and I think the Go-Go's are like best friends. And then, you know, you find out like there was just all this animosity, drugs, you know, sluttiness. If you can't get sex, then the perfect thing for you to do is to jack off. No, I didn't know they were bad girls. The Go-Go's were dirty? That would have been great. All I wanted to do was get laid, and there they were. Oh, my boyfriend ties me up. I get tied up all the time. Yeah, I think it's great that, uh, w you know, they proved that they could have just as much fun as the guys. I don't care, because their music was so great. If I had to rank them in terms of hotness... Belinda Carlisle was cute. Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle was the hottest of them all. Charlotte Caffey, I think, would be fifth. Gina Shock would come fourth. Jane Whelan would come third. Kathy would come second. Belinda would come first. Belinda Carlisle made it okay for little chunky girls to be sexy. My favorite go-go was and still is Jane Wheeler. I had a mad crush on her. She was sort of the brains behind the beauty. Maybe it was just my high school, but there was the rumor that that song was about virginity. Well, I think metaphorically, uh, their lips are sealed until they get married or meet the right man or fall in love. It taught me a lot about the female anatomy. Red. I had a crush on Olivia Newton-John. Let me hear your body talk. Oh, I remember the video, Let's Get Physical. She's with these fat guys on treadmills who are completely disgusting. And then they, they work out, they're gay. The video didn't do it for me, but it didn't matter. Because she was in tights. Yes! Let's get physical. Oh, that's what they played in the aerobics classies. Get ready for monkey plies. That's right. Get I remember the Jane Fonda video being like a big... Thing. I mean, one minute she was Barbarella, and the next minute she was telling us how to get in shape. And then we were being tricked into exercise. And we were smiling. Hello. Now, can you talk? Can you carry on a conversation? Hi, Jane. I'm having a wonderful time. I've stopped smoking. I'm eating great. It's a bad time for fashion in general. She is. High five, Reebok. A leotard with a belt? Does that make any sense? I mean, is a leotard going to fall down? <laughs> Which, what a hassle. All the snaps in the crotch. What were we thinking? I was all about the headband and some, what were they called? Leg warmers. <laughs> I totally did the leg warmers. They had to be ripped up to hell. Leg warmers were kind of convenient, you know, like socks without the foot part in it. Now I wear them as dickies. You know, if I've got a sweater and it's a little chill out, I just pull them over my head, the leg warmers. I look like a giraffe, but it's still a nice look. You flock of seagulls, I ran. That was the one where it keeps going around in circles. Get away. Yeah, that was a good video. Obviously, you can't mention Flock of Seagulls without talking about the hair. You know, some bands are just no style and all talent, and they were uh, all haircut. <laughs> it's like uh, Patti LaBelle's bastard white stepchild. Flock of Seagulls, long on top, long in the back. I still have some friends who have the Flock of Seagull haircut now, and we make fun of them. Although, back then, it was it was good stuff. I love you, too. Oh, Trivial Pursuit, great game. I'm the king of Trivial Pursuit. I beat my wife on a daily basis. Trivial Pursuit made me feel pretty stupid. How do you know the tallest mountain in Bolivia? And I just kind of wanted to say, it's in the name, people. Trivial Pursuit. What actor has a tattoo on his wrist reading, Scotland Forever? Roger Moore or <laughs> Sean Connery. What was Nixon's dog's name? Who is the victim of the murder in the game Clue? Who cares, man? <laughs> what U.S. state is known as the last frontier at? Pittsburgh. 
The science always got me. The green wedge always got me. The pink category threw me. Which gish sister starred in... I, mean, I don't know, dude. I don't know what a gish sister is. They sound hot, but I got no clue. Who was the king of England when the American Revolution broke out? There's something wrong with the human mind that you ask someone a simple piece of trivia, which they either know or don't, and then they try and reason it out. You don't know the name, dude. Just let it go. King George is what I'm going to say. I was right. <laughs> yes, I got it from Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> That's awesome. Gnarly. I think the guitar is the biggest, lamest, stupidest instrument ever created. Yeah, yeah, the guitar, the piano meets guitar. The guitar was invented in 1982 because all the keyboard players who were writing the songs were sick of having to sit in the back near the drummer. I'm a guitar expert. I know all the settings on the thing. Every keyboard player longs to be in front stage. I've got a red one and a black one. I just don't think a guitarist is sexy at all. I think there's just something very um, Jerry Curl about a guitarist. And to say that a keyboardist could be anything like a guitar player in the same sentence is sacrilege. It's just the thought of putting the keyboard on like you're a guitar player. It's just such guitar envy that it's just funny. It's kind of corny. I would never have somebody with a guitar on my stage. <laughs> I feel really empowered playing shows with that thing because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, sure. You could convince me to play the guitar if you suck half my brain out. When I think of keyboard players, I think of dudes like Liberace. Boy George, eat your heart out. I mean, they're, they're great keyboard players, too, but it's like, spare me. That's for weddings and funerals. I love you, too. The plot of Joni Loves Chachi was squeeze one last drop out of the Happy Days franchise. Don't base a TV show around Chachi. See why I love you. There's a, a stirring theme song. Look at me. I feel like I'm in heaven. And suddenly. I mean, that song. Are they lounge singers? Joni loved Chachi. It was a hugely popular show in Korea because Chachi in Korean means penis. And so it was Joni Loves Penis. Joni Loves Penis. <laughs> and I bet you everyone was tuning in every night to see if this was the day that Joni was going to get her Chachi. You know Joni Loves Penis. You know Joni Loves Chachi's penis. Yes. And now. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> I would watch Johnny Loves Penis, but I'd be even more excited to watch Chachi Loves Penis. I love E.T. Coming up, Mr. Silver Spoons himself. Here we are, face to face. The power of poltergeist. <laughs> and the allure of the arcade's first sex symbol. I fell in love. And her name is Miss Pac-Man. Next on I Love 1982. But first, this public service announcement. Hi, time for timer. And time to make a week's supply of healthy after-school snacks. Now some weekend when it's raining and your mother is complaining because you're hanging around just twiddling your thumbs. Tell your mom that you've been itching to make something in the kitchen. And oh yes, the mess will be a minimum. Okay, now take an empty ice tray and fill it up with orange juice or lemonade or pomegranate juice or whatever turns you on. Then cover the tray with plastic wrap. Carefully poke the toothpicks through the plastic. Put it in the freezer and in a few hours, crushed-o. Stacks of Hello, Weird Al Yankovic here. Let's take a look at how the world has changed since 1982. The musical Cats. Then, on Broadway, now and forever. Now, gone. Actor Scott Schwartz. Then, child star of the movie The Toy. Now, porn star. Way to go, Scott. Concert tickets for The Who. Then, Farewell Tour, $25. Now, Reunion Tour, $250. You call that a bargain? The best you've ever had? I don't think so. Now, <laughs> 
awa, 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 awa. Space Invaders was war. Zaxxon was war. The hell is Pac-Man? At first you got a few guys going, dilly, 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 and then you started seeing like these armies. You're like, just kill me now. You know, I can't do this. All of a sudden you had to have everything Pac-Man. You had to have the t-shirts. You had to have the dolls. Even that tasting taste in candy they had. Definitely defined an era and had songs about it. That was probably probably the second 45 I ever owned was Pac-Man Fever. There was like a book that you could get how to best win at Pac-Man. <laughs> Miss Pac-Man was better than Pac-Man. I fell in love and her name was Miss Pac-Man. I like Miss Pac-Man a lot. She was uh, she was hotter. I could just watch her eating cherries, strawberries, pears, and bananas. It'd be magical. I don't talk about other people's relationships, but I didn't see Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man spending a lot of time together. From what I remember, they lived in separate video games. She was bright enough to have her own. You know, she wasn't like Pac-Man and company, Pac-Man and family. She had her own sh Oh, sorry. It's more popular now than songs that sold more than it did that year. There's something about it that just makes it memorable. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine nine. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine nine. The lawyers warn us that you can't put out a phone number song anymore. You're supposed to say five 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 five. It just doesn't work. There is a real Jenny, and uh, that was her phone number, and uh, I did get it off a bathroom wall. Everybody in their lives have actually dialed that number. I feel terrible for the person who actually has that as a phone number. To you folks who had to change your number, I just want to tell you sincerely, sorry. I love you. There are still groups of Dungeons and Dragons people. No, I don't. Oh, God. No. I was in, like, you know, the room where people were playing. I tried that, like, twice. Nice, 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 yeah. I'm getting paid to be on the show, right? I was a dungeon master. I admit it, and an elf, because that I, I kind of look like one. You just go over to somebody's basement, their parents would be working all day long, and you'd just be down there like, you know, you'd be making your characters. People went to see that Lord of the Rings movie, right? Everyone seemed to enjoy that, but oh, you play D&D, you're a freak. The ship starts to move at about 25 knots. I remember this guy I had a big crush on was really into Dungeons and Dragons. You aren't going to meet ladies playing that. I don't even remember his name. I come home, do my homework, and, and from maybe 8 to 10, 8 to 11, I work on characters and uh, game modifications. They're like really serious and kind of awkward. We usually wore black heavy metal concert t-shirts to school. Dungeons and Dragons, basically... Um, for kids that really loved school and wanted to stay after in a club. They were totally enthralled, and it was like they would get into this whole, like, trance. Now you're in a forest. There are elves, and you're surrounded. They tie you up. I guess he was called the Dungeon Master or something, and he could just make up rules as he went along. It's an ego trip. I mean, you get all these little people under you, and you get control of them however you want. today those kids are all actually um, now running uh, MIT probably the kids that grew up to be internet billionaires they're running the country now they're in charge of national security maybe I should have played Dungeons and Dragons when they first said they were sending me a script called poltergeist I kind of went like there's no way I'm doing a horror film. Poltergeist was one of the scariest movies of the 80s because it could happen to you. The whole idea of your house attacking you was a really scary idea. Well, I first thought I'd never want to see it again. It really scared me that much. The plot of Poltergeist was scare the hell out of Mo Collins. 
I spent so much time screaming uh, that I would often wind up hoarse at the end of the day. I was on a double date. I'm sitting up in the front. I freaked out and started crying and hitting. What's happening? Not may the force be with you, but like may the force terrify your ass. I am so scared. Will you ever do that? I'm scared. What did the little woman say? What about the light? Let's go. Let's go. Get scared of the meat. I used to, you know, look at slabs of meat on the counter and wonder if I could make a move. Yeah, I moved the meat. <laughs> oh God, I love it when you talk dirty. <laughs> I would have to go into this huge tank of mud with these skeletons, which, by the way, I thought were plastic, but later found out they were in fact real skeletons. <laughs> it was a real nightmare. This has don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. The message reminds me of me and my friends sitting on, you know, on the porch with a little boom box. The message came on and every person I knew would start rapping along. People were eager to hear it. It just made people in rap know that you had to also have a little intelligence behind your words. It just changed everybody's perception of hip-hop forever. Prior to that, rap was just about partying. And then Melly Mel and them put a message, and they started talking about, you know, social commentary. It was plain to see that your life was lost. You was cold and your body swung back and forth. But now your eyes sing the sad, sad song of how you live so fast and die so young. The music, the concept, the lyrics is just such a unique record. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> Here we are, face to face. A couple of silver spoons. Hoping to find which two of a kind. This toy manufactured billionaire had a son. Ricky was more the grown up than the dad was. What the heck's a lug nut? <laughs> he just reminded me of Richie Rich. Seems if I died and gone to Coney Island. Yeah, I love it too. Every kid was jealous of Ricky. Having remote control doors is not only extravagant, I think it's dangerous. But it really wasn't a remote control door, it was a guy with a cape on a pulley and he was pulling the rope. And everyone still asks me about the train. When I was on different strokes, Silver Spoons filmed right next door. So actually, I rode the train. Only got to ride the train once. It went from backstage, a frown onto the stage, and through the door. The train went like 30 feet. It was wrong. You were wrong. We had Whitney Houston as a guest on the show. Hi! And I was just pff, blown away in love with her. I was probably like 16. Love those flapjacks. <laughs> so anyway, I said, I have to have a kiss. And I like begged. I'm walking down the dressing room she, she goes like this she opens the door and I go in and she kissed me Woo! never forget that kiss I was like Elvis right on bro <laughs> I love you too. coming up you came you saw you wept like a little baby there's certain films when you're younger it's not that you cry a little bit you're wrecked for the whole week why you have to love E.T. Next on I Love 1982. But first, Mr. and Ms. 1982. Hey, it's the Dice Man with the moment you've all been waiting for. At least that's what they tell me to tell you. It's time to name Mr. and Ms. 1982. I'm just completely thrilled, right? He spent 48 hours with Nick Nolte, which is more time than anybody should have to spend with Nick Nolte. She was basically a knockoff for Farrah, but hey, she got me there, especially in that cop outfit, you know what I'm saying? Eddie Murphy and Hedda Locklear, Mr. and Ms. 1982. Go figure. Mr. and Mrs. 82. I love you. Born in 82. I'm Soleil Moonfrey. Here's a look at some of 1982's very special births. Kirsten Dunst, Prince William, Diet Coke, Public Enemy, and Liposuction. There it is, the miracle of life, 80s style. Born in 82. I love you, 
E.T. is one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, and one of the few films in which I'm ready to admit I actually shed a tear. I cried. It was about, you know, the, that feeling of, of not belonging and that feeling of finding someone, you know, who makes you feel like you belong. I'm keeping him. What is it? There's certain films when you're younger, it's not that you cry a little bit, you're wrecked for the whole week. And that was E.T. for me. It's one of those movies that'll still make you cry. I just think that it touched just the most, like, tender, delicate, vulnerable place in all of us. E.T. Oh, no. I'd like people to certainly have a reaction to a movie, and whether it's just a small cry or whether it's, you know, sweating through your cashmere or sweating through your, uh, your corduroys. I like the image when E.T. and his friends fly. Whoa. Whoa. It taught me to hate the government. The government will come into your home with guns, and they will try and take your alien pet. Drew Barrymore, look how young she is in that movie, right? A creature coming from space, it gets lost, and it comes to our, uh, our house, and E.T. makes a mess out of it. E.T. was so ugly, he was cute. He looked like my third grade English teacher. A long neck, big head. I had an ant that I didn't like that sort of did that same thing. With long fingernails. He was a completely vulnerable big-eyed turd. Now, who couldn't love a completely vulnerable big-eyed turd? People keep marrying Larry King. It was a brilliant, wonderful fairy tale movie. It was a great experience. It's so enjoyable to watch and timeless. You know, it's, it's magic. I love you too.